Wesley Allen Dodd was an American serial killer and child molester. He's gone down in history as one of the most evil men to ever live. His time on earth was spent kidnapping, torturing, sexually abusing and murdering the most vulnerable among us. He was a predator who fell through the cracks of the legal system, graduating from acts of exhibitionism to sadistic child molestation and murder. He was born in Topanish, Washington on July 3rd, 1961, the oldest of Jim and Carol Dodd's three children. His father was physically and emotionally abusive and he was often neglected in favour of his younger siblings. He never heard or said the words, I love you. He witnessed violent fights between his parents and on the 3rd of July, 1976, his 15th birthday, his father attempted suicide following an argument with his mother. Dodd was conscious of his sexual attraction to neighborhood boys by age nine. At the age of 13, he began exposing himself to neighborhood children from his bedroom window. His father was aware of his son's behavior, but chose to turn a blind eye because he was otherwise well behaved and had no problems with drugs, drinking, or smoking. By the time he entered high school, Dodd had progressed to molestation, beginning with his younger cousins and then neighborhood kids he offered to babysit and the children of a woman his father was dating. He was arrested at the age of 15 for indecent exposure, but police let him go with a recommendation of juvenile counselling. Perhaps if action had been taken at this early stage, Dodd's life and the lives of his victims might have been saved. After the neighbourhood kids he had victimised moved out of town, he moved on to the children he didn't know. In August 1981, he tried to abduct two girls, but they reported him to the police. No serious action was taken. A pattern was forming. He would commit heinous crimes and face no penalties, and the more he got away with them, the bolder he became. A month after this incident, he enlisted in the Navy and was assigned to a submarine base in Washington, where he started abusing children who lived on the base, once offering some boys $50 to come to a motel room for a game of strip poker. For this, he was arrested, but despite confessing to police that he planned to molest the boys, he was released with no charges filed. Shortly afterwards, he was arrested again for exposing himself to a boy and discharged from the Navy. Dodd spent 19 days in jail and underwent court-ordered counselling. In May 1984, he was arrested for molesting a 10-year-old boy, but received only a suspended sentence. Dodd planned his entire life around easy access to, quote, targets. He moved into an apartment block with many potential victims and took jobs that would give him access to children. He repeat repeatedly molested the boys of a neighbour, but the woman feared that pressing charges would be too traumatic for the boys. In 1987, Dodd tried to lure a young boy into an abandoned building, but the boy refused to go with him and instead told police. The case was brought to court and the prosecutors, highlighting his history of sexual offences, recommended five years in prison, but he received minimal punishment because he had not actually touched the boy or exposed himself. He spent 118 days in jail and probation. After getting out of jail, he moved to Vancouver, Washington, and got a job as a shipping clerk. Dodd decided that David Douglas Park in Vancouver was a good place to find potential victims. He was arrested several times over the next few years for child molestation, each time serving short jail sentences and being given court mandated therapy. All his victims, over 50 in all, were below the age of 12, some of them as young as two. Most of them were boys. Dodd's sexual fantasies became increasingly violent. He wrote about wanting to eat the genitals of his victims and perform experimental surgeries to turn them into obedient zombies. On September 4th, 1989, Dodd lured two brothers, 11 and 10 year old Cole and William Near, to a secluded area where he forced them undress, tied them to a tree and sexually abused them. Upon completion, he stabbed them repeatedly with a knife and fled. When the boys were discovered, Cole was dead and William died en route to the hospital. Dodd moved to Portland, Oregon soon after this incident. He made several unsuccessful attempts at luring children in Portland, but on October 29th he encountered brothers Lee and Justin, who were four and nine years old, at a park. Lee was alone playing on a slide and Dodd convinced the boy to come with him, telling him that his brother had gone home and that he would drive him back. He of course didn't bring him home, but instead brought him back to his apartment in Vancouver, where he ordered the boy to undress. Dodd then tied Lee to his bed and molested him, taking photographs of the abuse. Dodd kept Lee overnight while he continued to molest him, all the while jotting down every detail in his diary. The next morning, he strangled the boy to death with a rope and hung his body in the closet, photographing it as a trophy. 
He stuffed Lee's body in trash bags and threw it in some bushes near Vancouver Lake. He burned Lee's clothing in a trash barrel, except for the boy's underwear, which he kept as a souvenir of the crime. Three days later, Lee's body was discovered, which sparked a manhunt for the killer. Dodd kept a low profile and mostly stayed in his apartment, writing down future plans for child abduction and also constructing a homemade torture rack for the next victim. On November 13th, he attempted to abduct a six-year-old boy from a bathroom in a theatre in Washington, but the child began fighting and crying as Dodd was leaving through the lobby with the boy in his arms. The employees became suspicious. Once outside, Dodd released his victim before getting to his car and driving away. The boy's mother's boyfriend came out to the theatre lobby and was told that the boy was almost abducted. The boyfriend went outside the theatre in the direction where Dodd was last seen. Dodd's car broke down a short distance away from the theatre. In order to not raise Dodd's suspicion and to stall for time, the boyfriend offered to help him. The boyfriend immediately got Dodd into a headlock and brought him back to the theatre where police were called. The police contacted the task force investigating the kidnapping and murder of Lee. Dodd was brought to the police headquarters where task force lead detectives interviewed him over the course of three days. Eventually, Dodd confessed to all three murders. During the search of Dodd's apartment, police discovered a homemade torture rack along with newspaper clippings about his crimes, a briefcase containing Lee's underwear and a photo album containing pictures of Lee. They also discovered Dodd's diary in which he detailed the murders. Dodd was charged with first degree murder in the deaths of all three children. He pleaded not guilty to all charges but later changed his plea to guilty. During his trial, the prosecution read out excerpts from his diary and displayed the photographs of Lee. The defense argued that Dodd was legally insane. Prosecutors requested a death penalty and the jury agreed. Dodd would claim that speaking in his own defense was pointless and ultimately the system had failed repeatedly. He stated that he would like to die by hanging and that he was willing to die if it brought peace to the victim's families. He was sentenced to death in 1990. Less than four years elapsed between the murders and Dodd's execution. He refused to appeal his case or the capital sentence. Dodd stated that hanging was the ideal method of death. During the interim, he wrote a pamphlet on how parents could protect children from monsters such as himself, and enjoyed giving interviews and reliving his crimes at any opportunity. Dodd was executed by hanging at 12.05 a.m. on January 5th, 1993, at Washington State Penitentiary in Walla Walla. By Washington state law, Dodd had a right to choose the method of his execution, and state law gave Dodd two options, lethal injection or hanging. Dodd chose hanging, later stating in interviews that he chose that method because that's how his final victim died. He also requested that his hanging be televised, but that request was denied. He ate salmon and potatoes for his last meal. His last words were, I was once asked by somebody, I don't remember who, if there was any way sex offenders could be stopped. I said no. I was wrong. I was wrong when I said there was no hope, no peace. There is hope. There is peace. I found both in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look to the Lord and you will find peace.